anyway, now we're heading to the Maasai. This is the famous Lake Natron. This is one of the most caustic bodies of water in the world. Mm -hmm. Most bodies of water are like about a seven, maybe an eight. This is a 10, 10.5. If you were to touch it, your hands would literally burn. But these flamingos, these lesser flamingos have learned to adapt and mm -hmm. it doesn't damage their body. So 75% of the lesser flamingos in the world will go here to breed because they know that no predator can get them. They can't get out into the water because it, it would harm them. It's, it's magnificent to see this, but it was thousands of flamingos everywhere. Just beautiful. So we travel and we travel and we travel and we travel. And now we get to our first Maasai. This over here is our, this is the second Maasai we go to. These are the Murans. The Murans are, they're warriors. And that's from the ages of 15 to 30. And this is where they learn to be a true man. Even though from the moment you're born, you're taught what a man is. This is where it becomes the real McCoy. And so this is where we hear about that they eat just the massive amounts of meat, milk, and blood only at that time of their life. After that, it's a lot of milk that they're consuming. These guys do not have anything to do with religion during that 15-year period because they feel religion makes them soft, will make them weak. They cannot. They must be. And I, and I, I really, there's videos of this and I've got some more coming out soon. They are really rough, <laughs> especially around women. And so, and especially seeing me, this foreign woman standing there, this is a wedding that we've gone to, which I'll show you in a minute. But so this is the second tribe. This first tribe over here, this is a church service I went to that they had for me with Mateo's family. And that's the first tribe we went to. So let's head on into that one. So this was where we stayed here. This is where we spent most of our time here it was with the Maasai in the Letiet family. And so here we have three tents. So we, this is important to listen to because we had something bad happen. <laughs> so this is my tent over here. Now I have like an organic tent because I'm so sensitive to smells. So this was not, this doesn't have all these chemicals that have been sprayed on them. It's made with very um, natural materials. And so Men, um, Meneno, who is my chef, we had to have a chef because of my, we, we talked about, he made sure that I kind of, because there was more rain in this region and it got very cold at night. So I actually would put on my like long john, my thermal underwear outfit because I was so cold, but the torrential rain would come down. So that protected me. We also had a third tent though. So this is my tent. The boys' tents over here, this was our supply tent because we were new, we were gonna do a lot of slaughtering. And this was gonna house a lot of our meat that we'd be eating the next day. Mm -hmm. And we thought we're, we're all set. <laughs> Wait till you see what happened on that one. So here's all the tribe coming over and they're helping us get all sent up and so forth. This is going to be our home for the next you know, week. So here we are. This is their boma. Now, a boma is, again, where their home is, but they also where their, their livestock, their livestock is so important to them. And so they're, they house them right within where their home is. Again, over here, you'll see this is this. So this is Mateo's family. This is his brother and wife and their family, and they, this is where their, their livestock is, and this is also part of Mateo's. So they built this fence. This is where the goats and the sheep stay. Over here um, is another big area, which I couldn't fit in the picture, is the, where the cattle sleep and stay at nighttime. During the daytime, they're all out. They're just out, and this is why the men walk 12 to 15, 20 miles a day, because they're walking and walking all day long with their livestock. This is very important to, to, to remember this. And so that's what we call a boma. This is the region. But they've, they've got other family members all close, very close by. They've got some neighbors. They're all so close. And this is the key, I think, to part of, part of why they're so pristine. It's also the same thing in Okinawa with many of the long longevity. You talk about their community. First of all, they knew I've always wanted to be a Maasai. I've studied them my whole life. And so they came right out and they started dressing me and they had all this ready for me. They had made all this jewelry for me because they love to put all their jewelry on and they, they're masters at beadwork. And so this is, this is my, this is, the, so they wanted to put my cell phone in it. And so this is what I wore around my neck and all their jewelry was just, just so, I was so blessed, so blessed. I went, it was overwhelming. This is Mateo's mom right over here, right here. This is his mom. And these are his um, stepmoms and, and aunts and so forth that were there. And uh, so that was just a beautiful thing that they had. So I, I lived in those kind of things the whole time I was with Maasai. This is the slaughter camp, my first slaughter camp. Women are not allowed. 
But because I'm not a member of the tribe yet, I was able to be there. And I felt so welcome. They were so wonderful. I didn't understand most, I, but, but, you know, Mateo kept translating and we had lives. Of course, you've got to go watch the lives, guys. You can go watch them. They're there. I also have regular, I, I still have more I to still post, but it was so beautiful. Notice the knife. Again, these knives are made by the Datoga tribes. Mm -hmm. Okay. The ones that were the blacksmiths. That's where the, the, the metal comes from. And it was so neat because they had just slaughtered a sheep. And so I'm going, I'm like, oh, you know, not knowing what I'm going to see. And then it's so neat because in the trees, you can see they've got body parts hanging. <laughs> so over here, this is the suet from around the liver. You got a leg laying up here. This is the head of the sheep. I'm like, oh, well, look it up there. you know. <laughs> and then this is, a oh, hold on. This is a leg over here. And it's interesting because in the Maasai belief, they're, they're, they, the way they think is just so powerful. Everything they do must have a purpose. So each body part goes to specific members or genders in their tribe. So one leg is always given to a neighbor. Mm -hmm. It's just the generosity. You always give a leg to a neighbor, the kindness. The other pieces, for example, and I'm going to, I'll be having other slides I'll be posting online as well that will actually map it all out what they have. I, so I'm going to do this from memory. I'm probably not going to get it. But the back, the back goes to the girls. I think maybe, yeah, I think the back goes to the young girls. The chest, I believe, goes to the young boys. The liver from the, I think it's the, the sheep and the cow go to the women. And the liver from the goat go to the old men. Hmm. Notice the nutrients where they're putting them. Right. The women who are having their menstrual cycles would need more of the iron and so forth, the nutrients. It was just profound. And, and so they're, they're, they're showing all these, I was just in, uh, astounded how, and, and they said, even when they go out and they do their, their four week, two, three to four week uh, slaughtering with the, with the warriors, they will still bring back those the pieces that are the women are supposed to have. All the they, they you they, you you cannot eat what doesn't belong to you. That's their belief. Mm -hmm. I thought it was so beautiful. So here we are. They're they're putting a leg over here on a skewer, and of course they never put it right in the fire. They believe, but most of their food is boiled. They boil it in water. No more than you know. We hear about all these the bone broths and stuff. And I said, well, don't you boil them for hours and hours? Like it, all the gurus say, we have to have all this bone broth. They said, no, no more than an hour, hour and a half tops. No. And so they don't. It's just very quick boil. And again, their meat is very tough because it's not aged. It's as fresh as you can get right here. And um, very tough. Again, again, it was taking me forever to get through small little pieces. You know, they were giving me the stomach to eat. They were giving me the intestines to eat. Um, I was a little leery, oh, you know, because you could still see some of the bile and stuff in there, but I did eat it and um, very rubbery. There was no flavor. I said, I, I, there's really no flavor at all. You know, but they loving it. They all oh, isn't so good, but they were just chewing through it again. Their jaws are so powerful, so powerful. Notice how important their machete is. They carry that with them all the time. I kept thinking, boy, I wish I had one. You know, you, know, you go through the bush and you're going to cut through things and they, but it's, they're not really washing it. They just kind of wipe it off and it's the same thing. So, and, and they're cutting right onto stones. It's not, it's not a clean surface. We just eat what we eat, you know, and you're not washing your hands all the time, sterilizing things. We're touching raw meat, but here's the key piece. This next thing, there's three things I'm studying right now. I'm researching, and I think this is powerful. And I fear that what some of the things we're sharing on social media could be doing harm. So we have to really think about this and it's, it's, let's, I'll, I'll share. In this pan over here is what they call their bark. And they're, we hear so much about their bark. It's like a bark in a branch. They slam it and they smash it down. They boil it for about an hour while that's boiling in its own separate pot, has to be a separate pot. They're then over here in this thing, they're boiling all different kinds of soup. This is their famous soup that they just believe is healing. And I believe there's a piece to this. Their wisdom is unbelievable. So they boil it and it's just going to have like the stomach. It's going to have the heart, you know, intestines, like the chest. It's going to have different pieces in this with, with this, with the fat. The fat is very important to them. So that cooks. Once this broth is done, they're not going to consume the bark. They don't consume a lot of plants, but it's the nutrients that have extrapolated into the broth. 
that is the key. They take that, they pour it into the soup and it has to be done for a half an hour. They will stir and they will stir and they will stir. And they said, it has to be this way. And I said, why? What is the point? What is the ancestral wisdom here? And they said they believe, and I and now that I'm researching it, it's panning out to even more than what they believed. There is specific nutrients that is in this this bark that they have, which I'm going to be writing about. There's so much I have so much to share with everyone. So much that it actually they believe that when it when they're ingesting this with this soup, that it helps them. It reduces the fat and allows them to digest it better and to absorb the nutrients better. But I'm finding out even more in my research with somebody sharing, which is very powerful because when we think about the high saturated fat diet and so many people are saying, no, we can't do, we can't do this, we can't do this. There is something very important about this. And they do believe this, that if you're gonna eat this kind of meal, this kind of fat content, this has to be done. And so my fear is, what if their ancestral wisdom is correct? which it, it's looking like in my research, that those of us who aren't doing this and we're taking, ingesting so much fat, what if it is causing us harm? And we're being guinea pigs. Here's the next piece of my research. There have been autopsies done on the Maasai. Their arteries were clogging. However, they're, they're larger, they're wider than ours. And so scientists are wondering, is it because their movement, they walk so much that it allows and expands everything to allow them to continue to live very long lives, even though their arteries are blocking. Number three, I've been, I, this is why I spend hours and hours and hours doing this researching. There's also some studies been done that they have a genetic DNA change that's happened over time that is allowing them to be able, and this has happened in many, many cultures I've been studying, that they have this different, different genetic component that many of us don't have, that they're able to consume such a high fat, saturated fat diet. So there's three things I'm checking on. I asked the elders about this and I said, what do you think? They agreed. Mm -hmm. And they said, this, this soup, this bark is hugely important. They also use this bark in their chai tea. Here's their chai tea. Every morning, this is made. It's, it's milk with some water and the bark and some either honey, if, it's, if honey's in season, or cane sugar, which they get from some of the other tribes that grow it. And so they do add sugar. They do have some kind of sugar as well but not a lot. And they consume at least a liter of this. This is like the beginning of their day. They, they only eat twice a day. They will consume four liters for the four to five liters for a woman, six to eight liters for a man a day. They will consume meat two to three times per week. Again, remember it's split up among all the tribes, uh, the people in the tribe. I didn't get much. There wasn't a lot. It, and it's not a cow. They only will eat a cow during a, cir a, either a circumcision, a wedding, some big celebration. They, will not, they do not want to, to slaughter their cows. So that's why they have the goats and the sheep because they, they can, the goats and the sheep can last, live in rough conditions. The cows can't. In the summertime, in the dry season, they lose so much of their cattle because the government has taken so much of the land away. They have no places to go anymore. And so there's no green places to, to and they end up dying. But the sheep and the goats, they can live on less. And uh, the goats, they can, they, 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 they don't eat, they eat bark. They can eat a lot of different things. The goats are very e easy to maintain. But it was so powerful to see this. So I said, but this is now. What would life have been before the government took the land away? Were you still eating like this? They said, no, we would have had more. We, we would have had more cattle. Therefore, we could have been eating more meat. I said, but how much meat? They said, again, when we go, the warriors go, it's pounds of meat. They said kil kil kilograms they were eating. But for, for me, I said, make it for me. They said pounds of meat, you know, four or five pounds a day. 
but that's only when they, they those few times a year that they go to the slot big huge slaughtering camp when they come back they have to go back out and tend to, to they have to tend to the you know their, their livestock and so they would eat but not the massive amounts that we think that we've been told that they're eating these massive, 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 massive amounts every day. That's only during the slaughtering camp time when, when they have it. Um, the women have, they've always been more the milk base. Milk has always been more their diet. They, they do eat meat. They do. And they love their meat. They love the meat. Um, but they really, milk is their go-to. It's, it's, they, they're not killing animals. And they said, we don't want to kill animals. That's why we don't hunt we don't, we want to live one with the land. So their diet is very much in Ugali. Some of the Maasai are putting Ugali in. This tribe I was with, because they're so adamant, only a few of them are starting to. Um, they just feel that it's, in the, especially in the summertime, when the cattle cannot, when the cattle are dying, that's usually when they add the blood. We talk about, we hear about the mixture when they add the blood and the milk. That's usually done in the summertime because the, the cows are not producing a lot of milk. And so that helps to extend the milk by putting like 50-50, part blood, part milk, because the cattle can't produce as much milk because they're not getting enough grass because it's not, not green anymore. And now it's even less because they, they, they don't have the land to take them to. And this is why the Ugali is coming in. And I asked the elders again, are they noticing a difference? And they all said, absolutely, absolutely. We have to we have to stick to our diet as much as possible. So again, the women, the men walk all day, with their, with it, but the women have different chores. And it's uh, and I again I did this with them. It was unbelievable. Again, I did live and not live on the live chat on this. They are out. We had to walk quite a ways to get to where we could chop wood every day. They have to do this. They're chopping and they're chopping and they're chopping and it t took forever. And then they're bundling up and they're making these were at, at least at least 150 to 200 pounds that they were lifting onto their heads. Now, you know, they were talking about my muscles, you know, what are these, what are these? They put me to shame. Now I broke my arm at the beginning of the of this whole thing. So I couldn't, I didn't tell anyone because I knew if I told them I broke my arm, they probably would send me home. So I didn't tell anyone. So I couldn't, I couldn't do a lot of lifting, <laughs> but I was trying so hard. I just didn't want to re refracture what I had already, you know, I thought I can't re do any more damage. So I probably was only carrying probably a hundred pounds on my head because I, I had to hold it and stuff, uh, but they had at least 150, not 200 pounds. I saw that videos. Oh, could you believe it? I could not believe the strength in these women and they were putting it right onto their heads themselves. I was talk about strength and, and we had to walk, you know, a couple miles with that on our heads and, and the strength that they have, that was just one chore. Then they had to go and get water and bring that back. And it was miles to go. You know, and then they have to do their laundry. The, the Hershey is doing her laundry. All of these things they're doing. Then they have to milk all the sheep, all the goats, all the cows in the morning and milk all the sheep, all the cows and, and all the, everything at night. They're moving constantly. And they're, 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 they're consuming over 5,000 calories a day. And here's the break. Oh, I don't know if it's on this one. I may bring up another one because I'm going to show you that if we have time. I've got a breakdown of, of, of what, what their calories would be with milk, just in the milk. It, it's, it's for now. I'll bring that up in a minute. So here we are again. Um, they make beads as well, because that's how they make some money to help buy the things that they need to help buy cattle and so forth. Um, and so they were trying to show me how to do it. No one wears glasses, just like in the Hadzabi. You know, they just can, pristine how that they, they can see it, it's just, and again, night vision, unbelievable. Here's the men out here. Look what the, they're just walking and they walk and they walk. Again, this is the, the wet season. So it's beautifully green, mm -hmm. but in the dry season, it becomes, everything's dead. It's awful. Here I am over here milking a, a goat. Very simple. I was like, oh, this is easy, easy. But boy, when I went to the other side, milking a cow, I was like, oh, I finally got it. But boy, that was a tough one. <laughs> But anyway, these are the elders. I did the um, live Instagram chat with them. Uh, the, the man in the middle over here, this is this is Mateo's dad. He's in his 70s. And then these are the two elders. They know that they're, they're pretty sure they're in their 90s. And the way they know that is they're so smart, the Maasai. When you're born, they have a certain section that they'll, they have the name for, it's like a 10 to 15 year period. So if your name is they give it a name and they, they'll tell you, this is the group you're in. Then you can kind of say, well, I know I'm around this age. Oh. That's how they remember. Or they, they think of something that may have happened 
in, in the world that they heard about that was near the time that they were born. And that's how they can try to remember. But they're, 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 they're close to 100. And so I asked them again, you know, are they fully squatting when they go out to the bathroom? Absolutely. You know, they walk again. Notice they all have a stick. That's not a cane. This is how they, they tend to, and they, it's like they're, they're shepherds and how they kind of move the, sometimes they have to kind of move and tap the animals to move along. They don't, they walk. And I've got videos showing you, how they, you see how they're walking. You wouldn't even know they're in their nineties. They just walk, you know, and they said it's powerful for them is movement. We have to move. And they said, part of our diet, you have to move when you eat like this. You have to. So anyone who's telling us that we don't have to exercise, if you're eating a, a, a low carb diet, yes, you do. <laughs> you have to. It's dangerous if you don't. It's mm -hmm. dangerous. We have to. It doesn't mean to go to a gym. They don't. They don't believe in that. When I told them what I do, they're like, why? You know, <laughs> so just walk. Just walk. And so just walk. Walk. We're, we're walking. And then every night they would bring me my, my fresh raw milk so that I can have before I go to bed. Um, they're lifting weights though. I mean, they're, those look, they're, they're, they're lifting living, weights. But the men don't. The men don't. But the women are they're lifting more than what we could we would be doing in, 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 they were just unbelievable and again I, when i do it at home and this is something that people don't understand i have i have my own gym in my house in my basement i just yeah i have my weights but my best workout is when i have logs and stones out in my yard and they're all different shapes because if we're just lifting the same the same weight the shape of it it it's not working different muscles. But when you have logs and sticks and all these different things, they're so different and they're so cumbersome and you're lifting them so differently. You are working out muscles you never knew you had. And it's a whole different ball game. And so anyone who's in the gym, I'm telling you, make an outdoor gym because that's my favorite thing is to be out in my, my yard where I've got my logs and they're very heavy, big, long things. And I'm lifting them and I, you know my stones and my rocks and I'm carrying them around. And I'm squatting and kicking them up. It's powerful because it's a different kind of a workout. It's real natural. And you're getting little small, little intricate areas you wouldn't even think of that you can't get in a gym. It's different. It's so powerful. So this is what happened to us. So that third tent that had our supplies and one, we had another slaughter and it had a whole bunch of raw meat in there. So in the middle of the night, I'm trying to sleep and I hear this ferocious attacking. Ooh. And I thought, I thought my team was being killed. So I'm screaming. I'm screaming. I thought my own. Oh my gosh, I'm like, what's going on? And then Mateo, he's like, they call me mom. Mom, mom, we got, we got, we're okay. We're okay. Just don't get out of your tent. Don't get out of your tent. I'm like, oh my God. And it was just awful the sounds that we were hearing. It ended up being a couple wild hyenas were attacking. They ripped into our this tent. They took all of our meat. But the dogs, the the dogs, the, all the tribes have dogs. And the dogs are so beautiful. This is Simba. And Simba, notice all the flies all over Simba. Every morning I'd unzip my tent and Simba would be outside my tent sleeping there. And he was just so beautiful. And I think that they're part, it's part of how they, they protect their, their family. They're part of, the, the, the dogs see them as their, their, their tribe. You know, this is, this is my, uh, the, the alpha, it's just their pack. It's part of the pack. And they, the, how they protect them is amazing. But the hyenas, the, the dogs weren't aware until they heard Mateo and then they came and they were right there to help, but they already had done the damage. So it was, you know, you never know what you're going to deal with. You never know what you're going to come up against when you're living out in the bush. It's not going to a hotel. This is living in the wild. Um, so here we are. This is, uh, the, these are what, the gifts. I always gave gifts to the tribes when I would leave. And the greatest gift you can give a pastoralist is cattle. Mm -hmm. And so I thought I'll give them more than that. So I gave them a, I gave them a pregnant red cow, red cows. This is the, they're, they're, the kind of cows that they have are called zebu cows. They're totally different than ours. They've got the hump and they, their milk is much more rich in fats and lactose and, and carbs. Mm -hmm. And so it's very decadent. It's very much like a sheep. I do sheep milk. It's very much like a sheep milk. Very, very rich, very rich. So I gave them a, I bought them a pregnant red cow. I bought them a pregnant sheep a pregnant goat and then a regular goat. And so they will be able to have life and, and food for a very long time from those animals. And then, then I was very blessed to be able to go and tell me if this is running over, we can stop whenever you want, darling girl. We're, we're two hours, so we're gonna oh. whiz through it. I think so. Yeah, oh my it's over two hours. So uh, oh my God. Well, I'll go real fast. I think we'll go real fast. You, you have probably two or three more. 
Okay, yeah. So what we have is this is when I did the, um, I went to the inaugur inauguration of the new chief of all the Maasai. Yes. And, uh, and he was just, this is him right here. And his name is Chief Kiero Otendo. And he's become a very dear friend of mine. And we text a lot or I was talking to each other. And this, it was rare. I, I was the only white person there. And um, they were so welcoming. And I just had the front row seat. I, I was right down recording everything. Um, they were bringing me, this is the slaughtering camp. They had slaughtered so many animals because there's thousands of people, chiefs from all over coming to see the main chief being inaugurated. It was, it was just thousands of people. So they brought me a whole calabash. This is a calabash. This is what they put their, their milk in. That's and right. this is grown. Yeah, this is grown by the Sanjo tribe, which was the last tribe I went to. This is um what they it's a gourd that they hollow out and they put their milk into this. So they brought me this is a liter. They brought me a full fresh liter of raw milk. And Mateo's like, what? How come we're not getting why why are they treating you? And then they brought me all this beautiful fresh slaughtered meat. And it was just I, I felt like royalty the way they were treating me. It was so beautiful. I would, I felt so welcomed. Here's Chief. He came to my hotel. I was getting ready to go to leave. And he came and met me there. And, and I did a live chat with him there. And um, he just wanted to find out my feelings and what I, I felt I could do to make life better for them. And um, so I'm hoping I can help them. This is a 102-year-old Maasai. And it was Tembo, my driver's grandfather. And we spent the time with him. And the video, if you, I cannot tell you how profound that video was. He is so handsome, so, oh, his teeth, everything, his hands were so beautiful. They were, he doesn't, he didn't look old. And he, he, he was heading right out after that to go tend to his, to his flock, just pristine. Here we are getting ready to go to our next Maasai. Here we are. This is our next camping grounds we we're at. This is a much different climate here. It's very hot and dry. Uh, it was just sweltering, sweltering here. We went to a wedding. This is the bride and groom over here. And um, it was a, a just unbelievable to experience a Maasai wedding. It was just unbelievable. Um, here they are. We went down to the slaughtering camp at the wedding and they were giving us, you know, here's, you know, this, have this leg, have this leg. They were just cutting pieces off for us. And I, I felt so welcomed, you know, it was just beautiful. And then the, the, the groom's mother came right over to me and she, oh, hold on here. The groom, yeah, the groom's mother came over to me and she just started putting all her beautiful dresses onto me. And this is what I have over here on. And so I, I felt like another again, here I'm a Messiah again. And um, so this is uh, one of the morons, the morons. He came over to me and they were, of course, they were all about my hair. And, and he, they were doing so, he was being kind. Some of the other ones were being a little on the rough side with me, but he was just so kind. So we, we got some good shots with him. And this is what I, the wedding gifts I gave them. I gave them a pregnant red cow and a pregnant sheep for the wedding gifts. And then here I am learning to milk a cow over here. That was a live Instagram, but that was, I thought, oh my gosh, it's going to be a flop. But I actually got it towards the end. And, and, and she was, Naisha, that was the mother to the groom. She and I bonded so much. She kept bringing me fresh raw milk all the time. And I, I gave her a Bible in Ma, the Ma language. And I gave Mateo's mom a Bible in the Ma language as well. And here we are with some of the family members here. Look how tall that they can get. Look at, they're just such, this such, perfection in, in, in their health. They're just so amazing. Again, milk was so important in this, in their diet. Same thing is, is Mateo's. They're milk and meat and blood. It's, it's their, their thing. They are starting to add it again, the Ugali. My hair, yes, was another big th ticket there. This was an elderly man. He's in his nineties and he at first didn't want to talk to me. He didn't want to have any, any cameras or anything on, but the more Mateo kept translating what I was saying, the more he started to respect me. And then he, he agreed. So there's a four part series on, on my, of him. Amazing. And he did at one point, he blew his nose out the side like this. And I've had some people, colleagues of mine who have told me that they felt that was very rude and I should have cut that out. I don't cut, I, I don't cut anything. I, I want you to see the real thing. And I, and you could hear me saying, Oh, look at that. That's charming. It was so ancestral. How else are they going to blow their nose? They don't have Kleenex. <laughs> we have to think about this. We can't find offensive, offensive things in, in what nature. This is how we are. If we don't have Kleenex, we don't have toilet paper, we don't have things, we have to do what we have to do. And it's charming when you think we're humans, we're animals. We are animals. We really are. You know, and so, and this right here, he's, he's cutting, he's showing me how to make a toothbrush. And this, this one right here. 
And so this is how they brush their teeth and they are adamant. And I really say this, every time you would look over, they've got something in their mouth that they're, they're either, one end is a pick, a to like a toothpick, I don't know if you can see this, and the other end's like a brush. And they would sit there and they're scrubbing, they're scrubbing their teeth or they're picking at it or they'll pick up a blade of grass or something. And they're always making sure their teeth are clean. I'm, it's, it's amazing. And they're, look, at, look at the teeth, look at his teeth. He's almost a hundred years old compared to the other man who's, there's a difference. There is a difference. Whole difference. This is the, this is what it's called the Salvador Persica. It's the uh, in Arabic it's Mizwak. In in Ma it's oral myth. And this is a traditional chewing. And I've done research on this. It actually has been tested over and over in numerous demonstrations that it, it possesses antimicrobial, antibacterial, antifungal, um, anti-carogenic. In other words, it stops um, cavities, anti-plaque properties naturally in just this twi this stick. And then we wonder. Not only is their dent their, 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 what they're eating, but how they're maintaining them with these sticks. So this is really cool. You can actually buy these online, but I brought, brought home a whole bunch of these sticks. So <laughs> <laughs> I've got a set of mine for my own. Um, now we're in the Sanjo. The Sanjo people, they are, I thought that everything I'd studied said that they were going to be more meat eating, more very much like the, 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 the wannabe Maasai, but this tribe is not. And remember, all different, all the different tribes are gonna be different. So I could go to a different Sanjo and they may be different. This is where we stayed here. This is our tent and our camping ground here. And that this is there, they've got more peak. Their huts were wow, you could stand up inside of them. You didn't have to kind of hunch over. Beautiful. And look at this. This one even has a solar panel because she has she has a light bulb. She actually has a light bulb in there. And so their homes were just beautiful. Very, again, she was sweeping and cleaning as well. Very pristine. These are the elders here. The elders I found, and they're my age. They're, they didn't have a lot of advanced elders in this, in this group here. They were my age, but they were struggling with their health. This man had something big going on with his knees. The water was re just retained. It was just, it had been happening for over a year. And the pain he was in, I felt terrible for him. I asked them in, in a live chat, you know, what, about their diet. And he said, you know, we're mostly Ugali, fruit and vegetables. And he said, maybe meat once a month. I said, what about milk? You've got, you've got all this livestock. Maybe a cup a day, one cup a day. And I said, has it always been this way? And he said, no. And I said, so what is the pristine diet? And he said, milk, meat, and blood. And I said, well, what has changed? And he said, it's just the land. It's the same thing all the tribes were saying. But I said, but but you, you your tribe is known for a lot of growing, a lot of fruit and vegetables. And I said, has it always been that way? And he said, no, not until we moved to this region, you know, like a generation ago. And I said, you know, you're growing bananas and things. I said, this is not a natural plant for this region. It had to be brought in, right? And so that's what I'm finding is a lot of the plants that people are eating were not it, they're not original that the area they were brought in and so when we think ancestrally would they have normally been there so when you go to where the maasai live there is no there, that fruit does not exist it is not in their region only in the region where they these people specialize in terraced farming because there's no water but they're able to be able to get water in these terraces that they built which is allowing them to have these crops that normally would not be growing in this region. So that's, we have to think about these kinds of things as well. Again, this is where they get their water from. This is how they carry it on their backs like this. In the, in the dry season, they have their donkeys. The donkeys, they have to walk miles and miles and miles, and the donkeys will carry, carry big things off the sides of them. This is their bone arrows. This is one of the arrows that I'm shooting with. So this is how they, this is how they protect. They are not hunters, but this is how they keep wild animals away they don't use the the um the Ma maasai use the spear mm -hmm. these guys have this is what they use they use the um the bone arrow and then our way back home to, to take me back to the airport i stopped i said let's let's just get some meat so again we stopped and got a couple couple trays of fresh slaughtered meat and then this is what happened to me here I, I massive burns. This was healing at this point over here. My face is burning. Hold on. My face was, it was horrible. You, you just could peel it off. And then there's a thing called the Nairobi fly that got in my tent. And I had never heard of it before. And at nighttime, if it lands on you and you brush it, wherever you try to brush it, it has like an acid that will come in on your face. 
And so it leaves this all. So that was on my face. Then I was attacked, of course, it must be mosquito bites because they're all over. This is the front side, this is the back side. And then I was climbing a tree with the kids. <laughs> I spent a lot of time with the children. And I normally, because I climb all the time, but this tree was different than the kind I climb. It was a really rough bark. I usually climb maple trees. This was a very rough. And I was trying to reach over to get a small branch because the branches were too, too wide for me to swing down. And when I went to reach for it, it was ripping my arm right up to pieces. And I couldn't grab the thing. And I, I heard my bone break. I heard, and I was like, oh, so I jumped right down. I was way up high. I jumped down. Thank goodness I didn't break my legs. But I got over to where Mateo was. And my, whenever I, because I've broken this arm four times. And um, it goes into a, sh a shaking. It's like, in a, um, because the pain is so severe, it goes into a, like a trauma. And um, it was shaking. He was, why are you shaking? I said, oh, I don't know. It's just let it go. Let it go. And I didn't want to tell him. I, I knew I'd broken it. So I dealt with the pain throughout it. And I'm, I'm, I'm just getting back. I think I'm up to about 15 pounds now. I can actually now to pick up with that arm. So it's, it's almost healed. And um, so this is, our, this has been my, 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 I'm sorry. It took so long, my dear girl. I'm so sorry. This is the tribes that we visited. And this is the book. If you ever wanted, this is the book that Dr. Kenobi and I wrote together and you can get it on Amazon. It's on any, any online bookstore and it's got many versions. And this is where you can find us and find me right now. Um, I'm at Suzanne Alexander, Suzanne.Alexander104.